Hey guys, I am the Kentucky Atheist, and today we're going to take a look at more televangelists behaving badly. Before we get going, I want to say thank you to my current Patreon supporters. If you're interested in joining, it's only five bucks and the link is in the description. With that said though, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> I want to let you know, viewer discretion is advised, I'll be showing a couple of clips that are examples of extreme hate speech in order to show some of the awful behavior these guys go through. But this video is named Scum of the Earth, so we were never going to look at the good parts. Some of the comments I received on my first video about televangelists accused me of poking fun at old has-beens and dead people, and that I cherry-picked my clips to show the worst of them. Well, this is all true. My first video was to take a look at some of the absurdity that these guys engage in and have a laugh while pointing out the seriousness of what they were doing. If you don't want to watch that video, you don't have to. But if you do, you can click the link in the top corner to go see it. But it's not necessary to see it first before watching this one. Televangelism has evolved over the years with the growth of the internet so that some pastors got to start by making videos and grew these mega churches that broadcast over the internet rather than television. But the idea is the same and to prove it, let's take a look at our first kook, the Apostle Catherine Crick. Catherine Crick moved to Los Angeles to pursue acting in 2013. She had a couple of small roles including a commercial for CougarLife.com. She released a couple of singles that were funded through GoFundMe and Kickstarter. Catherine Crick refers to herself as an apostle, a word that roughly means messenger and is most commonly used to describe the disciples of Jesus that were going to spread the word. So cool, she's going to go spread the word of God, right? Well, no. Catherine Crick is an apostle for the prophet Gior Davy, a popular woo-woo preacher from Tanzania, who she has been heavily criticized for calling her Baba, meaning Father, another word used in Christianity to refer to God the Father. Crick has also been exposed for using paid actors on stage for her exorcisms, and I'll leave a link in the description to a great video by Fight for Truth. Let's take a look, though. Jesus has the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come, come. God's free. Jesus, I want Jesus. I want only Jesus for me and my family. We will serve the Lord. I obey to the Lord Jesus Christ. I renounce all my sins in Jesus' name. Rejected my son at birth in Jesus' name. I renounce it. I love him so much. He is accepted and he is adored just like I am by my father in Jesus. I break every word curse and every generational curse now. I detach you from what you renounce and I command every spirit attached, every spirit of rejection, every spirit of rage, every spirit of addiction must go now. Go! Now. I will go. You will. I will. On three, all of you and him and the boy must go. One, two, three. So this is one of the common scams by today's televangelists. It wasn't good enough to just pretend to heal people on stage. Now we were having what amounts to instant exorcisms. No more are the days of holy water and spinning heads. Now all you need is a failed actress to count to three and jump up and down. This behavior evolved from the faith healings of the likes of Copeland and Hagen. And while it's not the most harmful thing Crick does, it does seem to me that taking accountability for the problems in your life would be more productive than blaming it on a demon that a crazy woman can count away. I thought it would be hard to find more videos on her doing these so-called exorcisms, but I had to look no further than the intro to her videos on her own channel. Let's take a look at those. Let 
So she does this often. It's actually a staple of her live shows. But this is not the worst part about Catherine Crick. It's her interpretation of the prosperity gospel and seed sowing that really bothers me. It's one crazy thing to pretend to take demons out of people who believe they have demons, but it's another to use that along with all of this seed sowing horse shit to grift people out of money. So let's look at what she has to say on the subject and talk about it along the way. Let's start with the foundation of what she preaches and walk through it. You are reaping that anointing in your life. And when you sow financially, this is the way to receive financially. Like this is the way when you're praying to God, open the doors so that I can have provision, enough money to pay for my bills so that I can move from being out of a place of lack so that I can move out of a place of just being, having just enough. Lord, when you're praying these prayers, you're praying, Lord, let there be favor upon me with my job, with my getting this house, apartment. You are actually not called to only pray, but the big thing you're called to do is sow because God wants you to live a supernatural life in terms of your finances too. But the only way to receive the, the supernatural financial provision is by sowing into God's anointed ground. Into your kingdom. So she says the only way to get money you need to live on is to give all of your money to her. This is common among televangelists, but it gets worse. Let's keep going. I applied and I was accepted and I t got the apartment. And this is where I'm sitting right here. Where I am right now is in my apartment now. And I've been here for, it was supernatural, let me tell you. And I know that because I've been on the other side and I just saw how the, the consistency of me continuing to sow, I saw the reaping of it. Even to be able to, to, to have this place even financially has been from supernatural reaping. There's no way around it. It's only because of sowing and supernaturally God releasing financial blessing. She got her apartment through supernatural means and you can too. And we definitely should believe her because she's been on the other side, whatever that means. Funny, I don't think she's lying that she got her apartment through sowing and reaping, but it's other people sowing that she was reaping. So they got nothing for their money, and she got what appears to be a very nice home. But that's the whole ball game with all of this stuff, isn't it? If one of if one of the believers watching this video believes they receive supernatural gifts by giving money away, tell me about it in the comments. I would love to discuss this further with you. Anyway, let's look at some more. It should be a really a no-brainer when it comes to offering giving that we would so generously. The thing I think that holds people back from sowing generously, one of them is they don't have this revelation that I'm sharing with you right now. Even though it's in the Word of God, they just, maybe they have not heard a preaching on it. But... Oh wait, it's not enough that you give me your money if you have a little extra. No, I want all of the money and God will take care of you because it's in the Bible. Here's where I have a clash with believers. I get all these messages about itching ears and wolves in sheep's clothing and what the Bible says and that's right the Bible does say that stuff but the Bible also says the stuff she's talking about so doesn't that make you the one with the itching ears <laughs> maybe it's just all made up you know if you are struggling financially you need to sow that's the way otherwise you're just gonna be you're gonna be like every other person struggling you're gonna just be in the world's way of receiving finances when God wants to be supernatural. So to get out of that rut, that cycle of not ever having enough, like or just having just enough and being in poverty, to get out of that cycle, you have to sow. But this is the other thing that is holding people back. So number one is they're missing the revelation so they don't realize, I want to give so much so God can bless me. They're only thinking, oh, I want to give back, which should be on our hearts too. But they they need you need to have this revelation for you to be able to give more otherwise you'll be held back to giving oh this is good like you'll feel good like yeah i gave good but god's like i want you to give more more than you normally would to this is the point at which this stuff makes me angry she is specifically targeting people who are struggling and telling them to give money and that they need to give more and more of their money and eventually it will pay off this is at the heart of the scam, because struggling, desperate people will try anything. She warns if you don't, you will be like everyone else, and in doing the world's way of receiving finances, um, does she mean you'll have to have a job and work for money like everyone else? Not one person ever in history has received supernatural money or gifts. You can call it that, but there's always an explanation, because money doesn't come from God, it comes from the Federal Reserve. Moving on. 
money that God gives you is his. Not a single cent is yours. It's not because you earned it. It's because God gave you brains to be able to have a job. God opened up doors for you to be able to have the job. God made there to even be the, the company you're working for, them to even have business to be able to give to you. It's all his. So we got to have that revelation so that we can give, out, give it all to God. So let's think through this. God created everything and everyone, and he created all the jobs too. So it's his money. You do the work. Sorry, but I don't hand my check over to the owner of the company because it's their company. No, I do the work so that their company keeps running and I get paid for my work at the company that exists. I don't owe anyone other than Uncle Sam any money for that, and it's ridiculous to say that I do. And what in the hell does God want with money anyway? All the worship and believing the most irrational ideas is not enough, even though it does say that's pretty much all that is required in the Bible. No, God wants your money too. He doesn't need it or use it. He just wants to make sure you will give it to him even though you need it to live. Does this even make any sense? It doesn't. If God wanted you to have money, he would just let you keep the money you work for and we have established supernatural money and gifts don't exist. As cringe as this lady and her ideas are, let's look at some more before going to the next guy. Like I said, if you are in poverty, the way to get out of that is to sow. And it can feel like, well, how am I going to eat today? But God will provide because you've sowed. So give more than the comfortable amount because that's where you'll see. If you're just sowing a little bit, you're only going to be seeing a little bit of reaping and you'll, you won't get out of that. You'll be stuck there. I break every curse of poverty off of you, every generational curse of poverty and lack. And I declare everything that's stopping you from sowing, that's trying to hold your seed, I command all those attacks must be gone now in Jesus' name. I declare that as you sow, as you sow generously, as you sow double, if that's what God is leading you to do, I declare the doors of heaven would be opened, these blessings from heaven to come upon you. I declare abundance to come upon you, abundance in your finances, in your bank account. I speak supernatural favor upon you for jobs in your career, in your ministry, in terms of things you need, houses and cars. I speak that favor to cover you and I declare doors to open up. I speak provision to come to you for you to be in a place of abundant life, no longer in lack, no longer just making it, but ha walking in abundance so you can sow bigger, so you can bless others more, so you can sow into the kingdom of God more to continue to reap more and more and more. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're in poverty, it's because you're not giving money away. Something about that doesn't seem right. I think maybe the word declare means something different to her than everyone else. I'm glad this random lady declares and commands all of these things, but the fact of the matter is prayer and tithing have been proven to do absolutely nothing for anyone unless you know someone's praying for you then it actually hurts your chances of success just use your brain folks let's look at a different kook and see what he thinks the bible has to say about women like Catherine crick let me introduce you to stephen anderson when the preaching of god's word is taking place it first of all it's not for a woman to be doing the preaching and second of all, it's not for women to be speaking. Even the Bible's really clear on this. Even if they were to have a question, they, they're not to ask that question in the church, number one. And number two, even if they want to ask that question to their husband, they should wait until they get home. You know, they should not in the service be talking. And by the way, this is why I don't believe that women should say amen during the preaching either. Now, here's the thing. When, when the preaching is going on, women should not express their opinion about the sermon. Even if it's a positive opinion. And of course the heart is in the right place. But what if a woman has the gall to say you're wrong? Now I did one time, I was preaching one time, and a woman actually disagreed with me in the middle of my preaching. You know, I, I said something and she said I was wrong. You know, and I, I kind of, you know, blew up a little bit. But anyway, uh, <laughs> But, you know, a, a lot, there could be times when a woman is just agreeing. And, and you know what? The heart's in the right place, of course. But in reality, if we're going to be true to Scripture, then basically we would say, okay, when it's time for learning, that's a time for women to keep silent. 
So who is Stephen Anderson? According to his bio on Wikipedia, he is founder of the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist Movement. He is a pastor of Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. He advocates for the death penalty for homosexuals and prayed for the deaths of the U.S. President Barack Obama and Caitlyn Jenner. He produced a documentary titled Marching is On, which he championed a wide range of anti-Semitic stereotypes, according to Matthew H. Brittingham of Emory University. Anderson has been banned from many countries in succession, South Africa, the United Kingdom, Botswana, Canada, Jamaica, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. So this was a tame clip of the awful hate and bigotry that this piece of shit has to offer, and I want to give fair warning that it gets worse, and I'm only showing these clips to expose the hate and harm done by these people. Here's his awful comments about the Pulse nightclub shooting that took place in 2016. Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. And I just wanted to record a quick video about the news this morning about the shooting in Orlando. I guess a, a Muslim terrorist went into a gay bar and shot him up and um, there's 50 uh, sodomites, homosexuals that have been killed and another 50 some odd injured. And then the, uh, the Muslim guy himself was, was shot by the police, it sounds like. And here's the good news and the bad news about this. You know, the good news is that there's 50 less pedophiles in this world because, you know, these homosexuals are a bunch of disgusting perverts and pedophiles. That's who was a victim here, are a bunch of just disgusting homosexuals at a gay bar, okay? But the, the bad news is that this is now going to be used, I'm sure, to push for gun control where you know law-abiding normal Americans are not going to be allowed to have guns for self-defense and then I'm sure it's also going to be used to push an agenda against so-called hate speech. I want to be clear here the Pulse nightclub shooting was the deadliest terror attack on the US since 9-11 and at the time it was the deadliest mass shooting in American history and is now only second to the mass shooting in Las Vegas. 49 innocent people lost their lives and 53 more were injured in this shooting. This guy is an awful excuse for a human being. And he says that the only good news was the people dying and the bad news is that America may try to get control over innocent people being murdered by the unreal number of assault weapons that make their way onto the hands of crazy religious fanatics. He calls it so-called hate speech while literally using the event to say homosexuals should die. It gets worse, though. I've never advocated for violence. I don't believe in, you know, um, taking the law into our own hands. I would never go in and, and, and um, you know, shoot up a, a gay bar, so-called. Um, I don't believe it's right for us to just be a vigilante. We're supposed to obey the law of the land and obey the powers that be. So I would never take things into my own hands or become a vigilante. But I will say this, you know, the Bible says that homosexuals should be put to death in Leviticus 2013. Obviously, it's not right for somebody to just, you know, shoot up the place because that's not going through the proper channels. But these people all should have been killed anyway, but they should have been killed through the proper channels, as in they should have been executed by a righteous government that would have, you know, tried them, convicted them, and saw them. Wow. So he's not advocating for violence and would never go shoot up a nightclub just because gay people are in it. But they should definitely die and preferably at the hands of the government because my book says so. Another excuse bigots use to be bigots. If anyone followed every word of the Bible, they would be the ones getting convicted because we have learned better since illiterate sand people decided everyone should be stoned to death for everything from blasphemy to adultery. Rape, slavery, taking children as sex slaves, that's all okay though. Anyone who claims the Bible is a book of morals either has not actually read it or is an awful person with awful morals. And if for no other reason, just because of this stuff. He's not wrong. The Bible does say what he claims it says. And most Christians believe what he says is true, even if they don't put it the same way. Who else does Steve think should die? Let's take a look. Off in traffic, I'm supposed to bless that person. Somebody at work lies about me in order to get the promotion that I should have got, I'm supposed to love and bless that person and forgive them. Amen. Somebody slaps me in the face or shoves me out soul winning, I'm supposed to forgive them, love them, and pray for them to be saved, right? Amen. But there are people in this world that
that are just, I mean, think about, what about some serial killer, serial rapist, child molesters? I mean, would it be wrong to just pray for them to just die and go to hell yeah. before they hurt anybody else? Whoa, well, wrong answer, buddy. <laughs> no, because look, and that's what we see here. You know, we see them praying. We see David praying for just wicked, horrible, reprobate people. I mean, think about it. what if you what if you were living in communist China while Mao Zedong was in power? Would it be wrong for you to pray for him to die or for them to be defeated when they go to war? Wouldn't you pray for the Red Army to be defeated? And pray for them to be to be killed because you want to have you know righteousness and godliness again. It's and, and look, it's not that he's your personal enemy or anything. It's just that they're ungodly, wicked, horrible people. The Bible obviously disagrees with all of this, as all the judging is supposed to be God's job and not the crazy Baptist bigot. As a society, there are forgivable offenses such as bumping into someone or whatever, and for the most extreme offenses, we lock up people and a judge decides their fate in this case. I agree there are people who have behaved so badly they no longer deserve the right to walk among us, but that is based on the laws of the United States, not the Bible. Letting a group of people such as Christians decide people's fate based on their magic book would be one of the worst scenarios imaginable. First of all, no two people interpret their holy fable the same way, and given the history of religion around the world, that would undoubtedly lead to lots of violence. Also. Who is right about their interpretation? Who gets to decide that? Because all of the thousands of religions around the world claim to be the one true religion, and this goes down to the individual level, even in the church, where some people think they are the real believers and everyone isn't. I know this is uh, a, a no true Scotsman fallacy, but it seems to be a staple in every church that I've been in, and I've been in more than the average person, I believe. Literally hundreds of millions of people are being subjected to looking at a trans freak. Yeah, yeah. And this person is just the, the evangelist of sodomy and filth to the world. And you know what? And, people are, and, then, and then people are like, oh, we need to pray for him that he finds Jesus. I'm going to pray that he dies and goes to hell. Are you serious? Look, I have nothing but hate. When I see a man dressed up as a woman who has mutilated his body to become a woman and saying, hey, look at me, everybody. Look at me, kids. I mean, the kids in America today, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, are seeing this freak and having their minds perverted and ruined permanently. I hope, I listen to me, I hate him with a perfect hatred. Amen. I have no love, no love. For this Bruce freak. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. I hope he dies today. I hope he dies and goes to hell. He's Amen. disgusting. He's filthy. He's reprobate. Yeah. And I would pray all these prayers from Psalm 69. And so, oh, how could you say that? Well, how did God say it? Yeah. Yeah. I pray all this in Psalm 69 and Psalm 109 toward him. Amen. You evil, filthy animal that's destroying the morals of our country. Right. Die! So outside of being an awful person, the big thing that sticks out here is he disagrees with praying for someone to find God and instead says, no, I pray that they die and go to hell. Earlier he mentioned what he's called so-called hate speech. I wonder if this qualifies as actual hate speech to him since he literally said he hates the person, wishes them to die, to go to hell and suffer for an eternity. I just wanted to show how awful this guy is. Let's move on to our third and final scum in this video. The next guy is well known and has a huge following in Tennessee and online. He would call Catherine Crick a witch and has spoken about his dislike of Steven Anderson. Well, let's just look at it. This ain't no sci-fi movie. This your pay. You've known me for 15 years. I'm a truth teller. At the expense of my own life and safety of my family, I'm a truth teller. And that devil, we wrote them all down. That devil gave us the names first and unsolicited information until it started pouring forth and then we commanded it in the name of Jesus. Gave us the first and last names of the six witches that have been sent as plants at Global Vision Bible Church. 
First and last name, I promise. Unbelievable. First and last name. Oh, we got some folks, we about to raise up. They know it's about to happen, amen, hallelujah. They know it. Gave us the first, my wife writing down the first and last name of the witches. Now, here's the interesting thing. Remember that debacle we had last week when I jumped in the chips and I told you who the witch was? I say six were named because they ain't been dealt with yet. It named them. It named the ones that I mentioned last week under this tent as a full-blown spell casting witch. Even the devil will expose the devil. And you can walk over my office right now. To God be the glory, I lie not. We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. So that fruitcake on stage is Greg Locke. He is the founder and pastor of the Global Vision Bible Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. As you can see, he has a problem with witches. He claims there are six that were planted in his congregation, and three of them are there at the time. Yeah, that's right, there are three witches, and I imagine they are seated between the vampires and leprechauns. Greg here believes that what your doctor would call autism or OCD is actually demonic possession, and luckily for you, he exercises demons. What a coincidence. Greg has been outspoken in his love of Donald Trump and his hate of pretty much anyone that thinks different, but... Let's get back to the witch thing. How does Greg feel about witches? Let's see. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil-worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We got your last name. We even got an address for one of you. Yeah. You so much as cough wrong, and I'll expose you in front of everybody in this tent, you stinking witch. You spell-casting, pharmacia, devil-worshiping mongrel, you. You were sent to this church to destroy us. You were sent to this church to lure us in. You were sent to this church to cast spell. Listen, some of you been sick because you befriended that witch. And I'm going to go ahead and serve notice on you right now. Don't move. I'm in the mood. Two of you in my wife's ladies' Bible study, and you know who you are, and we're going to ask you to get out, or I'll expose you in front of everybody. Stinking witch, we ain't playing your witchcraft games. We ain't playing with you bunch of Freemasons. We ain't playing with you Satanists, you bunch of devil worshippers. We ain't playing your games. I'll call you out right now in the name of God and not even break a sweat. And I'm hot. So Greg plans to expose these witches and dox them because a child that claims she was possessed told him their info. Of course he doesn't expose these people, he only threatens to, but makes it clear he not only believes that witches are possible, but that for some reason they constantly visit his church. Well, who else could be a witch, according to Greg? Hit Mount Julia full of witches. This town full of witches. This, this town full of Freemasons. Uh, we ain't just talking about no uh, Salem, Oregon. We're talking about some witches all over the place. Waffle House witches, Cracker Barrel witches, man and woman witches, church-going witches, preaching witches. Now, this reminds me of the part in Forrest Gump where Bubba is going on about shrimp, you know? Shrimp scampi, shrimp stew, shrimp and grits, fried shrimp, Walmart witches. I guess if you think everyone is a witch, then a few are bound to show up at church. But this is just the tip of the iceberg of crazy that is Greg Locke. Here's some more. It's the word demolition. That's what it means. It doesn't just mean, well, you know, I'm just going to pull it. Uh, 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 uh. It means you demolish the house that the evil spirit left when you kicked it out. So maybe at our Global Vision store, we ought to start selling some Bible bats in the name of Jesus. Because what some of you need to understand is you've been delivered from a demon, but you've not pulled down the stronghold yet. 
You got to get rid of the triggers on that iPhone. You got to get rid of the triggers on that Netflix. You got to lose her number. You got to lose his number. The demon comes out when you expel it. The stronghold comes down when you demolish it with the Bible. So just to be clear, Greg went and bought a rather large Barbie house, spent some time putting it together with the intention of taping a Bible to a baseball bat and destroying it on stage. And the crowd is cheering. What else can I say about that? I don't know, but it makes for damn good video. I'm almost going to say I'm about to the place. I am to the place. I'm to the place right now. If you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. You can get out, you demon. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief you cannot be a christian and vote democrat in this nation i don't care how mad that makes you you get pissed off as you want to you cannot be a christian and vote democrat in this nation they are god denying demons that butcher babies and hate this nation they hate this nation get mad all you want to i don't care if you stand i don't care if you throw tomatoes praise god i'm about to throw a microphone up in his house CNN can eat my dirty socks. You cannot be a Democrat and a Christian. You cannot. Somebody say amen. Yeah. The rest of you, get out. Get out. Get out in the name of Jesus. I ain't playing your stupid games. I don't know what the Bible says down in Mount Julia, but the one I read says you only have to believe and ask forgiveness to be a Christian. Greg's apparently says you can't be a Democrat either. When you look at the hate and violence this man spreads, it's clear his intent is to also use this approach for his political beliefs. And I'd feel the same about this clip, even if it was Republicans he was hating on, before any of you Trump cultists jump on me over it. Excluding others is the name of the game when it comes to Christianity, because people wouldn't worship, and more importantly, they wouldn't give money if everyone was welcome. And I think that sums up the problem with all these people. They want to paint this picture that if you participate and believe the way they do and think what they think, then you're good. But if not, you have demons are going to hell and don't deserve respect. They're wrong, and I'll continue to show how wrong they are and how awful they are, no matter how many nasty messages and threats you Jesus freaks send me. I don't feel like I need to say a lot more about these guys that I've not already. And I think the clips really speak for themselves. I just happen to be the redneck that stitched them together for you. I want to really thank everybody for watching. I plan to release some kind of video every Sunday going forward. So if you're interested in that, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. And if you click that little bell icon, you'll know when more videos are released. I'm looking to take part in some debates. So if any believers want to take on a dumb redneck from Kentucky, just let me know on Twitter. The link for it's in the description. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.